Welcome to the show, Anthony Murphy, for another Starbucks on deck. Anthony Murphy from Bucks on Deck. Anthony, I see you rubbing your eyes. We started this an hour later. What's the deal, buddy? Yeah, I know that. Trust me, that extra hour kicked in a very clutch this morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was uh, I, I was telling Murphy last night. I was like, I was like, you good for 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 doing the show a little bit later? He's like, it's your show. I'm just here for yeah. it. So. <laughs> I'm like, it's your guys' thing. Like, sure. <laughs> and an extra hour of sleep. Let's go. Yeah, he was so he was go. like, but I will take that extra hour. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But anyways, yeah, glad to have you back on the show. Um, you know, as always, we talk about the farm system when you come on, because who better to bring on than the guys from Bucks on Deck? Um, so Anthony, it's another pretty big week, I would say. Um, yeah. so what do you have for us this week? I don't know where you guys want to start hitting, pitching, anything specific. Um, let's start with let's let's go uh, let's go hitting. Yeah, let's hitting. Go hitting. I, I think I, I hear think... there's a guy. I'm I'm a, I don't know if you have him as one of your two, but I hear there's a guy in AAA who's mashing the ball. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, there's a couple. I can go. <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple. I, like like you said, uh, it was a pretty good week for for the. Um, for the offense down in uh, Indy, they put up they put up like a ten runs in an inning on a position player. So every everyone got a nice little bump on the offensive category. But like I mean, Henry Davis is like outside the fact when you obviously if you just look at numbers, Henry Davis looking good, looking like the obviously what he's 24, a 24 year old um, former first overall pick. So you kind of expect him to go back to triple a and and hit like that but like he was struggling in the majors to um to get to the fastball and he's the quality of contacts pretty pretty solid on the fastball right now i i haven't been i've been able to find like the like the average velocity or anything like that that he's faced like to see if like, like there's a big velocity difference in the fastball he's facing but he's slugging over 700 right now against fastballs and breaking balls um doing everything that you kind of want to see at this point so I'm kind of in the boat, let it ride out, kind of thing. Let them. I I don't want to mess with them until it's you're you're fully ready to say, okay, well, you're you're our catcher again, and um, that will probably come after a week of facing better pitching than he did uh, this week or this past week. Yeah. So, but I mean, an encouraging sign. It's just every, every all the. The eye test looks good with him so far. The 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 numbers kind of back it back it up. You know, like like you know, I, I was on here and and you know the eye test was really good with Nick Gonzalez, but then there's some like under underlying numbers to maybe be concerned about on there. I, I think Davis is kind of passing on both ends at this point for it. So really really encouraging start for him. Um, I haven't had a, too much of a chance to kind of like see like much of his work behind the plate to see like defensively if he's working on some things. But like, I mean, offense was always going to be kind of the the calling card, and I think I think everyone would be okay with a little bit of a below average defensive catcher if he's mashing in, in the majors at that point. So yeah, real quick before we kind of get into the meat and potatoes of your segment here, we talked about Grant Cook, and I would imagine a lot of people don't know anything about Grant Cook. So just if if he ends up getting the call for a week or so, um, and he gets into a game maybe too um what can people expect out of grant cook like tell us a, just a, just a short elevator pitch like one to two minutes who's grant cook well the one thing that i, I really like about him is like you know just a couple of years ago like you know 2020 there's no minor league season and you know once everything kind of get go, got going again he was just kind of a third catcher, you know, you'd send him somewhere, put him on the development list. And he was kind of there just to work with the bullpen and, and side sessions. And, but he's kind of built himself up to, yeah, he's not going to be a great hitter, but like a very reliable defensive catcher enough to where like he got the call up to triple a over some other guys and, and worked his way into some playing time there and, and, and kind of the guy down there at times in, in Indianapolis. And I think he, he caught Paul Skeens just about every single time that Paul Skeens pitched, I, I, I believe, um, if not all most. And, and like, e even then, like, I, I think those like who watched a lot of the spring training games, he, he, he got in as like a late game sub 
quite quite often there. So it kind of feels like the Pirates are are not like high on him as in like maybe he's an answer, but like as far as like the go to depth guy, I, I think he's kind of become that guy for him. Really strong defensively, um, calls a good game. All that, all that kind of stuff that you're going to see. If it's someone that's got to fill in there, like w- while your offense is clicking, like you, it's it's like if you plug off uh, Austin Hedges into a better lineup to where you don't have to pay attention to, you're not relying on Austin Hedges for any offense at all because the rest of the offense is clicking. So you're you're more okay with it then. Yeah. Then. So. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's yeah. Thanks for that. I just figure a lot of people probably because he's not a prospect. Like let's yeah. he, he's not he, he's yeah. he's an organizational depth piece and, yeah. and and he's an organizational depth piece they may need this week. So yeah, yeah appreciate that. Need, they have quite a bit of guys that I, I would say fill that role and they fill that role pretty pretty well on there. But he's probably the guy right now as far as the the organization organizational guys they have. Yeah. Okay. So. All right, so let's let's get into it. Two, what what two hitters stood out the most for you this week? So, go well, first guy probably go all the way down to the complex for this Ooh, guy that they got right. in the trade for um in the Carlos Santana trade. Johnny Severino yes. uh, led the complex over the last week in OPS, had three home runs, six RBIs, a lot every, everything he makes. Like, I don't think he I don't think he got any hits in like the two games that I saw him playing while I was down there, but like the it's one of those like the contact sounds different when he hits the ball it, it sounds di- different and you're starting to see it kind of translate as the season has gone on a little bit of swing and miss issue right now he's swiking striking out a, a little bit um but like complex you can say that about like a lot of guys and, and stuff like that um just but the complex league isn't really known for like seeing guys with like home run power, unless you're like a 22, 23 year old guy who's just like barely hanging on kind of thing. So for an 18, 19 year old to be having this kind of home run surge is incredibly encouraging. Um, I, I, I thought with like the complex league getting moved up like a month with um, they would kind of ride out like Severino and, and Jordani out for the entire season. And then that still gives you about two months of Bradenton left and you can kind of push them up to Bradenton, but they're both kind of like playing into a situation to where like, okay, well, the complex might be too easy for them at, at this point. Like he's just, every time he's on, he's walking, uh, when he's not hitting home runs, he gets on like first and then he's like stealing second. So like he, even like Johnny Severino right now, it's kind of seems like the complex isn't becoming much of a challenge now. So he might push his way. He might push, might make a case he's pushing his way into like a early promotion or at least earlier than what I thought at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, six stolen bases, four homers and 14 games. So mm-hmm. yeah, that power hey. speed combo is certainly playing out. Yeah. Uh, the, the F- F- FCL team had like a game where they had like seven or eight seals in a game and they, they, they mostly do like seven inning games now. So mm-hmm. they're just like, if, if they get a guy on first, like he's going to, get on set they had a guy who got a single and then stole second and third on like the next over like the next three pitches or something like that so they, they're just running crazy down there right now they have that i was looking at the the team numbers and they the pirates fcl team has the highest ops by like over 100 points than any other team down there right now oh so, wow yeah the other teams they are gonna take them out of the league as a team. yeah yeah, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna bump them up to the F- FSL just just because they're bullying everybody. Pirates Pirates could have two <laughs> at least okay teams in the F- FCL right now, at least hitting wise, just based yeah. on all the guys that they have down there right now. It's like it's it's you know try not to get too excited over hitting guys until they hit like double A and stuff like that. But there's there's a nice crowd of guys down there that hopefully it's one of those like we're going to throw like 10 to 15 guys up against the wall and hopefully two or three of them stick once they hit double a. So. Yeah, that's a good point. There's definitely a lot of interesting names right now down there. So yeah, I think we've talked to you a lot about this, uh, about this, this team. (laughs) It, well, I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, to be honest, you want to talk about hitting guys, there isn't a lot happening in double and triple a. So it yeah, kinda, that's probably why we will be. <laughs> yeah. So it's 
so it's kind of, it's usually easier to narrow it down to to and like Greensboro's like they're they're hitting at another level right now. They're taking full advantage of their 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 home park. It was a little bit of a slow start, but they're they're hitting home runs like left and left and right right now in Greensboro. So most of the action is down in the lower lower levels, at least hitting wise. Nice. All right. So who's the next hitter? Um, I we'll have to go to. I don't know if like he's probably doesn't qualify as a as a prospect, but I know everyone's starving for some sort of first base kind of kind of thing. And uh, Nick Samillo, <laughs> Nick Samillo, ever since like he started the year in um, on the development list, and they kind of worked him in slow as things gone on, and then like he's kind of just taken over the first base position down there in in, in Greensboro. And he's just, he's just hitting like just he hit, he hit two home runs over this last week. I think he has like six or seven this month. Um, started the month only with one, and now he leads the system in home runs. So uh, even had like a stolen base yesterday. So he's just hitting well. He's the strikeouts are are like right there. Your strikeouts are like right there, like borderline for a guy who's what twenty four and. It, Technically, in the second year of uh, of Greensboro, mm-hmm, but right. like the, the power, though those the home runs he are, he's hitting aren't Greensboro home runs. Those are any ballpark home runs. So he he struggled to make contact last year, at, or like effective contact. Like he he'd hit the ball, but he's not he's hitting it with authority now. Finally, so it looks like he's getting a little bit of confidence and stuff like that. There's. You have Seth Beer in Double A right now, so like, there's not much holding him, holding him back. So he, he's 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 another guy too. Like if like another month or so, when you're starting to look to shuffle guys, he's a guy that you're probably at the top of the list. Want to want to see how he does against Double A hitting or pitching? Yeah, twenty four. He was the 16th round pick in the 2022 draft uh, out of Rutgers. So yeah. Um, not someone I've ever Sadaway, paid any attention to. I've never paid attention to any of to, to this guy whatsoever. I, I yeah, didn't and even it, know it existed, yeah, to be honest. He, he was even in like Braden's, like he's always kind of like been they've always up to like this month kind of treated him almost like a death play, death player. Like last yeah. year he spent time on the development list, uh didn't really ever play like when he was with Bradenton, they throw him in against like lefties and stuff like that. Um, so like, it, it, like, okay, well, he's a platoon guy in, in single A, like next kind of thing. So, but like, it's the hitting's continually to kind of come. He's getting incorporated more into the lineup and stuff like that. And they took two first basemen with like later round picks last year. Uh, Josiah, or I guess a couple years ago, Josiah Seidler was another one. And he, he kind of like, he was the guy that kind of like burst onto the scene last year. He was hitting like, home runs left and right down in Florida and stuff like that made his way to Greensboro. And he's kind of just hit a wall. He, he started the years, the first, the first baseman, he's on the development list now. And, and, um, and Samel is just kind of taken over and just rode away with it kind of thing. So hmm. I still don't, I'm still not sure if he, like, I still probably wouldn't consider him like a, a prospect prospect yet, but like, I know everyone kind of wants something at, at first base. And um, he's probably, unless you want to consider Matt Gorski a first baseman, the best hitting one. Yeah, I was saying, right unless now. you want to, yeah, Gorski's had a really hot week or two. Yeah, which he's not. He that's that's kind of nothing new for him. He like Gorski usually has at least a week or two out of a season the last couple of years, so where he just kind of goes absolutely crazy. I think he hit like ten home runs in a week in Greensboro a couple of years ago, um, right before he got promoted. Um, yeah, he did that. And I know he was going. I remember he was going nuts in Greensboro right before yeah. he got promoted. So, yeah, another guy who's probably not really a prospect. Like he, he technically counts as one, but you know he's twenty six. Um, he's doing in AAA yeah. what you would hope a twenty six yeah. year old is doing in AAA. Basically, basically. Yeah. And I mean, we've seen we've seen like elsewhere, like the twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight year old like quad A guys get like really hot for like a little bit of a stretch and. And not saying that's the case here. Like the guy has the one thing that I'll always say about Matt Gorski is there is no denying 
the raw power solely because that swing is so funky that it is all muscle that he's using to get to hit because there's no unison. There's just moving parts everywhere. It, it's, you know, you want to generally use your whole body to, to get put power behind the swing and all that. It's, it's all, it's all him. It's all muscle that he's setting it out on there. And which leads to a lot of the swing and miss issues because there's, there is so much moving parts and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's shift focus to the pitchers. A um, couple guys we want to highlight this week from the from the mound. So I guess the first guy, and th- this he's kind of become like a, a a personal favorite for me as far as like pitching. And I had a chance to talk with him while I was down in in Bradenton. <clears throat> the numbers are still still not great on there, but you can kind of see the stuff starting to to turn. He had his best start last this past week um, as a pro Christian Curtis was the team's uh, 12th round pick last year. He got an overslot deal. He threw five innings, only gave up two hits, one run struck out nine, which the innings pitch and the strikeouts are career high for him. He also walked four. the walks have been really bad. Um, he's been really bitten by the, the home run. I think his home run fly ball rate is like 30% right now, which generally league average is like 10. So, okay. They're very unlucky. Like this is kind of same kind of thing I said with like Sean Sullivan a couple of years ago, like he had like a 30% home run fly ball rate and like his ERA was like super high, but then it's like, okay, well that, if that comes down, you're looking at much better numbers overall generally. So, and Bradenton generally isn't like a home run, like factory and stuff like that, especially during the summer. So theoretically you could see that com- coming down. And once that starts coming down, <clears throat> but he pitched in the, um, he was a late sub for the, in the um, breakout game has a really good fastball, a couple pitches on there. I talked to him. He actually, th- he says he throws the, uh, he actually throws two different curveballs. One of them is the the death ball, you know what they, they call that. Um, it's just like a really, really hard curveball. It looks, it registers on, on Savant as a slider, but it's really just like a curve. Mm. Um, he had surgery, a couple surgeries back in college and there was some like nerve damage that happened. They actually had to go back and redo the surgery because of the nerve damage. So he he's still getting feeling back in his throwing hand, which is which has led to some of the some of the um, the control issues. Because there'll be times during the game he's like everything's going great, and then like the control will just completely drop. And that's that's him still kind of learning how to pitch with the with the feeling with, you know, not a hundred percent feeling in his hand. He said, based off of last year, when they drafted him to now, it's like leaps and bounds better. So he's getting better gradually on there. It's just still trying to work with that. And every now and again, stuff will drop. And that's kind of when you'll see like a lot of the walks, like two of the walks that he had in his last start were like back to back. So you could be Mm -hmm. like, okay, well maybe he just kind of dealt with that there, but. Yeah, definitely That's seeing where the walks are an issue with him. Yeah. Um, but striking out batters and and yeah, his best that was that was his best start as a pro was this past mm-hmm. week. Yeah, he had 13 swing and miss. He had like a 50% whiff rate, 22 called strikes. So he was throwing a lot of strikes. Um, he like a fastball cutter, just nice little uh, good change up um, at times. And then like I said, the two different like the two different curveballs that he uses. So guy, guys, interesting stuff. He's a guy that kind of struck me as he's probably like a reliever long term kind of thing and all that. But like if you throw, can throw him into the bullpen for like an inning or two and he's already thrown 96, 97, maybe he's a guy that can get up to 98, 99 then at that point, if you know he's only going one or two innings and the fastball play, he's he's also, you know, because he only pitched one full season in, in college. So he's, he's learning how to use the fastball and the Pirates have done a good job of kind of teaching him how the fastball plays better. Like you could see it starting him starting to use it up in the zone a lot more as it's gone on. And that's when you've seen the swing and misses kind of go up for it then. Like his like he was throwing 97, 98 his first couple starts, but everything was like middle down and he wasn't getting any any misses with it. Now now he's they're starting to get him throw it a little more elevated and and the strikeouts are starting to come at a much better rate. So he's he's a project. He's a project because, you know, he hasn't pitched much. He's a project because of the control, 
Kirkpatrick because of the issues with the arm. But I think there's you can see why the Pirates rolled the dice and gave the overslot money and all that kind of stuff to him because of the the intrigue and, and upside kind of thing. So cool. um nice. who else? Who else? Um I guess I guess like I said the um you know Greensboro, the ball's been kind of flying out of Greensboro. So the best way to avoid that is just not to let hitters get contact with it and Patrick Riley threw five no hit innings last week. So that's a, that's no, not allowing hit is generally a key to a success, I would say. So good job coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, See, so he, he uh five no, no hit innings, uh, seven strikeouts, strikeout rates up to like 33% right now. Um, he has probably surpassed E what I had expecting yet. And, and it's still, it's still high A. He, and he's been, um, <clears throat> he's been bit by it being like high A and, and Greensboro and, and stuff like that with the home run ball. He gave up one, a couple starts ago that I don't think the, you know, you've all heard how the, the, the announcer in, in Greensboro can get with, yes. with some of the calls. He, he literally was just like, everyone just kind of assumed it was just a pop-up and it just kept going and then going. And then it was just, I think it amazed everyone that it was a home run and it was like, it was like a three run home run. And he was, he was rolling up to that point. And then it's just like, okay, well now he gave up this should have been a fly ball, like at every other ballpark in all of baseball. And then it's a home run. So he's given up a couple of those still a little bit of a, you know, working on the control thing, but I think he, he was a guy who like intrigued me as a starter, but like, okay, let's, he's a guy that, but he could probably, if you throw him in the bullpen now, <clears throat> he could probably push to like triple A by the end of the year kind of thing. They've committed to working him as a starter. Look good. He's pitching better, deeper in the game. The only thing that I don't like is I have no, the, they don't have any kind of like radar reading right now. So I have no yeah. clue how hard he's thrown, especially later in the game. I know, <clears throat> I think it was Josh Norris for Baseball America. He was at one of his starts and he said it was like 92 to 94 up to like 96, 97, which for a guy learning how to start and, and with the control issues, he's probably dialing it back some to make sure he's throwing, throwing strikes to trying to build up. He, but he's as a starter, I, I think, I think he's done better than I expected for, so far numbers aside yeah i'll say this with patrick riley <clears throat> and this might be the second time we've talked about him this year on this show but um because he had another really really good outing earlier in the year too um against the same team too so i don't know if it's just that team <laughs> whoever boston's affiliate is <clears throat> he's gone 10 scoreless against them with 15 strikeouts so um he dominates those guys but I um the first look I had at Adam, and I think the first look a lot of people had was during that spring breakout game. Yeah. And um he I mean it was just an inning of work, but you could see how the stuff plays kind of out of the bullpen and in and, and spurts. Yeah. You mentioned the whole, you know, he could probably push triple A if you just make him a reliever right now. What's kind of like the your your philosophy behind that? Like, would the Pirates even consider doing something like that, especially with the way their bullpen is performing? Like, would they take some of these guys who are likely going to be relievers and just say, you know what, we need you, let's push you, and and see if they can find something from their organization right now because like they're they they need they need relief help. What what are the odds of something like that happening? I would probably say for someone who, like Patrick, like Patrick Riley specifically, just because they, yeah, you know, the, 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 the Patrick Riley's of the world, the, um, I mean, who else is down there? Who's probably fits the same mold. Um, JP Massey. Um, who else? Who else? Um, Carlson Reed, you know, guys like that. <clears throat> where you know maybe bullpen is where they're going i think actually a really good example is braxton ashcraft actually like a lot of guys probably think he's he's a future reliever 
he has a lot of in- intrigue as a starter in double A. Mm-hmm. He's on the 40 man. <clears throat> the stuff is obviously really good and would play in the bullpen, I think, right now. Like Braxton Ashcraft could be a major league reliever right now. So like do you do you just say, hey, you know what, we we could really use you right now? Or do they stick with the development and say, no, we're gonna we're gonna try to use a starting pitcher? Like at what point do you kind of do you weigh those two options? I, I, I think the point w- would be, I mean, I guess maybe if you start seeing people drop like they did late last year, maybe, maybe then, but then also too, like if people start dropping like they did last year, it's probably good that you have someone like Ashcraft on the 40 man who is stretched out like that. So you're not running three, three bullpen games out of, out of five throughout the, throughout the, the rotation. Ashcraft is definitely someone who could be a major league reliever right now. Probably a very good, good one. I mean, he was throwing 97 his last, last time out. And I mean, it was, it was over like the first three, four innings. He was up 97 consistently. So in a lot shorter outings. Yeah. I I think that fastball would probably play a lot better. He has two above average. I probably say the slider is a plus pitch as, as well. So He'd definitely be a guy like I I think that's part of the reason why you build so much depth. And there are some intriguing guys like bullpen wise and in triple A that not are not on the 40 man, some like Ben Heller or something like that. He's he's done pretty well down um down there. So I would probably imagine you'd want to give those guys a shot too first before before you start bringing up um you even start the conversation of uh, taking like someone like Riley out of the, out of the rotation for as good as he's done, or even like taking Ashcraft out of the rotation for as good as he's done. So you probably want to cycle through some of those guys first, but if it gets to be like an all hands on deck kind of situation and the pirates are in the thick of things, then I, I mean, I like, that's what, I mean, we've seen the, the Cardinals back in there, like, Hey, they take a guy and shoving him in the back of the, the bullpen and, let it ride and then throw them back into the rotation the, the following year kind of stuff. And so that's I, what I mean, I said it. Like, what, what's your yeah. thought on that? You know, like, you know, being part of the development is like saying like, Hey, let's make you a bullpen this year, but like, but we're not going to, we need bullpen help. Let's make you the reliever. It's more of a temporary. That's part of your development. And then next year, let's get you back to being stretched out. I, I think if, if, if the situation is right and calls for it, then, then go for it. Go for it, and, and in the, the situation's right. I'm saying you have a, you're either in the playoffs or you you have a shot at the playoffs, and and you think that kind of arm would make the difference, or you know, like or someone else goes down, a couple people go down, and, and stuff like that, or a couple people just are straight relievers are the the you know relievers are is the most unpredictable position out there, and and I think I think we're seeing it now that thank goodness like the rotations kind of like broke through and stuff like that. Because I think now if we go into a season saying that like our bullpen is a strength is the strength of the team, then you're probably, you might be in trouble because like you can never tell what, what, what's going to happen. I mean, even Bednar's pitching better, I guess, but like still like, is it David Bednar that we're used to seeing? So Mm -hmm. so it's the most unpredictable position and I guess anything can happen with it. If the cards align right for it, then yeah, go, go for it. Always, always go for it. Go. You never know in baseball, you can win the world series one year and then not even make the playoffs. The, the next, what the Cardinals or the, the Texas Rangers had like the third overall pick, third, fourth overall pick the same year that they end up winning the, the world series. So things can change. I mean, obviously two different situations. So, but if you have the opportunity to do it and you think, a, you think, Ashcraft throwing the eighth inning will make the difference. Then, then I think you do it. You can always stretch him back out the the following year. Cool, but that has yeah, to be like a last resort. I feel like for me, I, I bring that up because Tyler's actually talked about that a little bit, just like as far as development, you know. And like I think one pretty famous, like Corbin Burns, you know, like he came up and was right in the bullpen. Like this is he, <laughs> Corbin Burns we talked about. We know how good of a pitcher he is. Um, but yeah, like for the Brewers, he came up right away, right into the bullpen, and it was like, okay, yeah, we needed you. That's part of your development. Next year, you're back in the starting role, and again, that he became Corbin Burns. So yeah, I just want to kind of like get your your feel for that. 
Freddie Peralta, yeah, he, same way. He he was in the yeah, bullpen the first there you few go. years, first couple of years for the Brewers. I feel like it's a it's a very Brewers move. Yeah, the Brewers do it a lot. Yeah, they tend to produce people. <laughs> yeah, so they're also typically in it. Like like uh, like Murphy says, if they're in it, they could use yeah. those relievers. You know they they provide a lot of value. I think like right now where things are going and all that, I mean, like they're not too far out of like 500 and stuff like that. But um, I, I think, I think as of right now, you probably just let them, you stay the course on all that. Maybe you give like the, the biggest thing that you probably do is send Patrick Riley to double a by the end of the year kind of thing. Uh, but outside of that, if they are that high on him kind of thing and, you know, they invested the high draft pick and, and, I think he got right at slot value kind of thing. Um, they, they're doing that probably because they want to at least test the water. And there's nothing wrong like development wise. You know, getting be able to pitch five to six innings guaranteed per week, sometimes more, goes a lot further for development wise. And you look, you have better opportunity to learn how to pitch, like starting wise, as opposed to like we're going to throw you in the bullpen. We know you can hit a hundred. Just go out here and high A and throw a hundred. 15 times, you're not going to learn too much doing that. And you get to the majors and hitters are a lot better up there and, and they can turn on a hundred mile an hour pitch every now and again. So if you don't have anything else to offer outside of that. You just missed out a bunch of development time because you're just trying to pump gas the entire time. Nice perspective there. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Murphy. Um, no Bucks on deck again, Substack. If you aren't subscribed, subscribe to it. It's great stuff. Um, your YouTube page too. I think it's just Anthony Murphy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. lots of prospect videos. So if you like just kind of watching prospects pitch, he's got, he's got plenty of that over there. So yeah, make sure you, um, make sure you subscribe. Good stuff from Bucks on deck. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. We appreciate there you. you. Yeah. All right. You guys have a good one. <laughs> All right. You too, All man. Right. Yeah.